What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Cam's Corner. We're on episode three now. I'm your host, Colin Martin, here with the man himself, Cameron Mays. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of Cam's Corner. Well, my camera just messed up, but let's go. No worries. We're on the fly here. Uh, so it's been a minute since we've met. There's a lot of stuff that's gone down. Last time we talked to you, we talked about early MLB season. We talked about the NHL playoff predictions. Uh, obviously, it's been kind of wild in hockey right now. Um, I'm not going to give this one too much preface. I'm going to let Cam spit his uh, mind on this. But for anyone that may not be a hockey fan that's checking this out, uh, the Bruins had a 3-1 series lead in the first round on the Florida Panthers, and they came crashing down. Uh, Cam was in the garden for game seven where they lost in overtime. So I'm going to give you the floor here. I'm just going to ask, what do we make of this Bruins upset? It is the greatest downfall in sports history. Biggest choke job in sports history. It's it's a joke. I mean, I I was heartbroken. I mean, they scored in overtime in game seven. And I was just sitting there. You know, the whole garden just went quiet. But you're up 3-1 against the worst seeded team in the playoffs. All you have to do is win one more with the two best goalies in the league and great greatest team ever. You can't win one. And we had they had the lead. In every single game going into the third period, and they blew it, you know. And you know, I hate the I hate after series, NHL and all sports really. It's oh, this player was injured. This player is injured. That's why. Okay, if you're injured, then don't play. Don't blame it on that. You guys sucked. You guys lost. You know, it was a complete downfall. I think Jim Montgomery did an awful job of keeping Olmark in and starting Swayman in Game Seven when he had no warm up for the other games. I mean, he just went out. That's the First time he's played in two weeks, you know, so obviously you can't blame him the loss game seven. I mean, you had home and home ice advantage and you and you can't close it out. I mean, you're up three, two with five minutes left in the third period and they Florida scores in the final minute, you know, and Florida coming out of nowhere. I mean, they, they had backs against the wall down three, one against the greatest team ever. And they strung it together. You know, that goalie change to Bravosky was absolutely great. And, you know, they're definitely a team to look out for now. Yeah, so I hate to do this too. I hate to put you on the other side, but that begs the question, and you alluded to it. Do the Panthers have enough steam right now to make a push in these playoffs, or do you think they kind of used up all their good luck in one series? I definitely think they're going to give – so they play Toronto next round. I definitely think they're going to give Toronto a run for their money, but I don't I don't really see them moving on. But I also said they weren't going to move on against Boston too. But, you know, everything can happen. You know, this really – this is the year of the upsets. You see Colorado Avalanche lost, reigning champions. Uh, um, Tampa Bay lost, Bruins lost. I mean, Rangers lost. You know, so it's it's anything can happen. It, it, this this playoff shows you that regular season doesn't matter at all. You can be as good as you want. Playoff comes around, whole energy shifts. Yeah, and I think that's a good point. I mean, we see it in all sports. You just got to get to the playoffs. Once you get there, who knows what's going to happen? I mean, thinking about the NBA, we see the Warriors and the Lakers showing out right now as lower seeds. You really just got to get there. Uh, yeah. With that being said, I know the playoffs are open. I know you mentioned it. There's a lot of things that could go down. But as we were talking here last week, or two weeks ago, I should say, you had the Bruins winning the whole thing. They're out now. Who was your Stanley Cup favorite now? Who We got to refresh here a little bit. As of right now, we're talking on May 2nd, who's winning the Stanley Cup? So I'm going to go through my picks that I did and kind of restring it now. So, yeah. Um, I had in, in the semifinals, I had the Bruins and Lightning. Both of those were wrong. It's the Panthers and Maple Leafs. And hey, let's talk about the Maple Leafs getting out of the first round for the first time since 2004. I mean, that is absolutely insane. You know, they were up 3 1 2. They dropped game five and then won game six. You know, props to them. Um, you know, I thought I thought that it was going to go to seven games, went to six games. I predicted a Lightning to win, but Maple Leafs came out and won it. Um, I think they're their favorites right now. And honestly, um, I think. I think they could have a chance, but I think the Hurricanes are a team that is kind of forgotten about right now because they they uh, took care of the Islanders pretty good. But uh, I I had Hurricanes and Devils. I had I predicted that correctly. I predicted the Golden Knights Oilers correctly. I predicted the crack in the win, and they won. Uh, I had the Wild against the Stars, but Stars ended up winning. You know the West doesn't the West isn't as strong as the East. I feel like you know, so I feel like. You know, it could be a toss-up. I think the Vegas Vegas could potentially still go there. Even Edmonton's really showing out too. McDavid and uh, Drysaddle going off right now. So, but I, I think 
honestly, I think this is the Hurricanes year. I think they're going to win it all. I, I mean, fair enough. I know last time we were talking on here, you know, you had the hot take that the Hurricanes were the only team that could even test the Bruins in the East. So I guess it checks out there. When yeah. you still have Vegas after their first round performance in the finals, if you guys didn't watch the last episode, it was supposed to be in Cam's world, Vegas versus Boston. Do you think they're still going to get there? Is there another team out West that you think is challenging them right now? Like I said, you know, they're up against Edmonton right now. I think that could be a seven game series. You know, both have great players, great coaches and uh, want to win bad. But um, ultimately, I see them coming out against Edmonton and uh, even the stars might come out of nowhere, too. You know, you never really know. Stars are not really talked about right now. Uh, they made good work of the wild one and five gentlemen sweep. But I, I still see the Golden Knights going to the finals. Yeah. And we have a lot to talk about in the baseball world, but I want to stick it here with hockey just a little bit more. I gave a little bit of a break to you because I didn't want to cause too much pain right at the start of the episode. You know, we got to keep the people watching. We don't want them to get all sad. Yeah. But it begs the question I got to ask, what do the Bruins have to do this off season to, you know, maybe not match this historic season, but how about just, you know, compete in the Stanley cup playoffs, you know, in the finals, what do they have to do? Well, you know, it's, their future is up for question right now. I mean, Bergeron could be gone. Krejci could be gone. You know, this this whole team, you know, there's a lot of free agents. You know, we can't – they can't keep up with the, uh, you know, salary cap of people. You know, you have Orlov, who we got in the trade with Capitals. Hathaway got in the trade of Capitals. And, you know, both of those people, uh, they cost money. Taylor Hall costs money. I don't think they have the cap for that. I don't think they're going to have – they're going to want to pay that. We may even see Omar traded for picks, you know, and that was something that was talked about in the season. Should we trade Omar right now while he's high? You know, and I think I think it's a very high possibility. Um, you know, I think this was the last season to really get something for a long time. You know, I think it's going to be a downward spiral, spiral from here on. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm just the host of this. I don't watch too much hockey, but I was getting into it. You know, I finally start getting into the Bruins this year. You know, we're both from the area and I think I give up now. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Yeah. But to bring us to a little bit of a lighter note, you know, it's not all sad news here. I want to kick us over to the MLB. So we're about 30 games into the MLB season now, give or take. And the standings are coming at a complete surprise for a lot of reasons. So I won't spoil too much, but I just got to beg the question. I want to hear two to three teams that have impressed you the most so far and two to three teams that you're just disappointed in. So I'm going three teams that impressed me so far. Obviously, number one, Pittsburgh Pirates. Coming out of nowhere, leading the NL East, uh, NL Central, my bad, 29 record. Best record in the NL, um, second best record in the MLB. Absolutely insane. No one saw it coming from anywhere. They're a great team. They're young. And, you know, this, this could be the year. You know, it's still super early. But, you know, I don't really see them getting cold, super cold. You know, they could drop a couple games. But right now – they keep making this push and keep playing how they're playing. They're going to be a team to look out for. My second team surprising, the Texas Rangers. You know, I had a lot of promise for them, but I didn't see them coming in first in the uh, AOS right now. You know, they have a game and a half on Houston, two and a half on LA, but being first with a tough, tough uh, division two with the Mariners in there too, besides the athletics, they're a forgotten poverty franchise. But, um, Really surprising. Uh, Marcus Simeon's going off. Corey Seagull's finally going off. Their money finally paid off for them, you know, after last season, both of them not having a great year. And uh, everyone's like, this is awful picks. And Jacob DeGrom, he's getting injured, but he's still pitching good. Um, my third team that's surprising so far is, I'm going to say my team, the Boston Red Sox. I mean, I, I really did not see them being over 500 in April. I thought they were going to have like six or seven wins Honestly, yeah. You know, I could say what I want. but Tell I me when I can cut you off. Tell me when I can cut you off. Tell me off this right This is the now. same man that had the Red Sox winning the World Series. In this yeah, prediction. that was my fake one. I didn't really I – didn't, I was just saying that, but now I believe it, you know. I okay. had that false hope, but they are strong, you know. If they Wait, just now, to, you, now you believe it? I want to make I sure believe you it. got that right. I'm riding on my train. But, you know, now if they they get some pitching, they, they're going to be one of the best teams in the American League. Absolutely. Their offense is one of the best. Their offense is one of the best offenses in the MLB right now. Oh my God. Don't even start this. Don't even you start have, this. You, you have to, I, I, 
can't believe this might be the first time in history we've had a World Series favorite without pitching. Cam, what are we talking about here? Uh, that's why I'm saying, I'm saying if they get pitching, they're going to be one of the best teams. That's why I'm not saying they are one of the best teams right now. I'm is saying, Clayton Kershaw on the trade block? Is Jacob DeGrom on the trade block? Where is the I'm saying, I'm not talking block? about top pitchers. I'm saying we just need a couple more relief, maybe one or two, two or three starters in the lineup. That's what I said in the beginning of the year. I they let me tell you, third in RBIs, 160, third and third in hits, 268, fifth in home runs, 40. They're they're great. But the pitching, they're all going to be in last because they suck at pitching. This sounds like a Colorado Rockies team to me, Cam. Absolutely not a World not. Series favorite. You can't even favorite. talk about the Rockies like that. You can't even compare. Let's see what the Rockies are at right now. 9-20. 9-20. No, 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 no. Oh, I'm, I'm talking about we all know how the Rockies are every year. Their hitting stats aren't bad. Their pitching is horrible. They play at Coors Field. They don't win a thing. The Red Sox have great hitting this year. I will never argue on that. That's a good hitting squad. But if you need two to three possible starting arms, you're screwed. I'd like to see what Brian Bayo do does. I'd like to see what some of these younger guys in the pipeline do. But Cam, it's got to happen. And if it's going to be this year, it's going to need to happen real quick. I'm not saying it's going to be this year. <laughs> yeah. I'm saying if they get pitching, they are. I, I'm not going to say World Series, but I'm going to say playoffs. I'm going to say a deep playoff push. If they get, can see. I'm going to say next year. Absolutely, this is a bridge year for the Boston Red Sox. All right. All right, I can respect that. I'm going to get your off your tail a little bit because I really do think with some pitching, we see the lineup, they can hit. Everyone knows Devers is going to be a piece there yeah. for years and years yeah. to come. But, I mean, to kick it from that, I mean, those are some teams that have impressed you. A couple of them impressed me. Let's talk about the disappointments. I mean, disappointments, it's still early. You know, like I said that, but I'm going to say, honestly, the New York Yankees. I thought they were going to be first in the AL East, and they are dead last. They're still at 500, but 15 to 15, awful injuries. You got Judge out right now, Stanton out, a couple other guys. And, you know, they really aren't making – even with the short porch, they can't they can't hit yeah. anything. You know, and if they keep it up, they are, they're going to be the 2022 Boston Red Sox, and I am loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my second team, the Chicago White Sox. I mean, I saw this tweet the other day. Everything the White Sox went downhill after that Field of Dreams game. And honestly, it feels like it. Back then, they seemed like a World Series favorite, and they're starting the season 8-21. and I mean, they just got off a 10-game losing streak. You saw the video of Luis Robert hit an infield uh, – should have been an infield single, and he just jogged to first base. You know, it just shows there's no energy for the team. There's no wanting to win. And changes need to happen over there quickly. Yep. My fourth team, I'm going to say the Philadelphia Phillies. I thought they're going to have really good coming off World Series, getting that revenge, but they're sitting at 500 right now, 15 and 15. But let's talk about Bryce Harper being back tonight, only 159 days being on from Tommy John surgery, which takes guys a year, year and a half, even two. I mean, that guy's an absolute beast, one of my favorite players. And I'm, I know the whole MLB world is psyched to see him back tonight. Yeah, and that's incredible. I mean, so I was going to bring up that exact point. A guy like Ryu, uh, you know, Blue Jays' former ace, he's had Tommy John two years ago, and he's still really not close to back. A guy like Harper getting in the lineup this quickly is incredible. Uh, yeah. Before we move on to some of my next points I have, this is just, you know, man-to-man. -man, I want to ask you this question because it's really been in the news lately. Uh, we just talked about some disappointing teams. This team is bad enough that they're not even disappointing. We all saw it happening. There's been a lot of buzz lately of the Oakland A's moving out to Vegas. How do you think that would affect the MLB world? You know, there's been so many historically we look at guys like Pete Rose who have been, you know, not allowed to be in the MLB Hall of Fame, basically exonerated from history because of their gambling. And now we're going to put a team in Vegas. I don't want to sway your opinion here because there's a lot of upsides to it, too. I just want to get the Cam's corner opinion on the Las Vegas A's if it does happen. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean. I think the whole MLB world is hurt for the athletics fan base in Oakland because they're, they used to have, they used to fill the Coliseum and that ownership absolutely destroyed it. They don't care about the history. They don't care about nothing. All they care about is money, not even money. I mean, they just want, I don't even know what they want because they, they're so awful, you know, and back to that gambling thing. I think it's awful. You know, I think I say it about every sport, you know, why can't these players gamble, but you're sponsored by DraftKings or, like 
Barstool Sports Betting or FanDuel, you know, it's ridiculous. It's, I, I mean, I get it, you want to go to Vegas. It's going to be a big market, huge market. You know, and now you got three major teams there, maybe an NBA team going there as well. But pretty soon they need a, all sports. They need to allow gambling. Yeah. And just to throw my two cents in on that, you know, the gambling, I can get it goes either way. But I have family out in Oakland. I was in the Coliseum maybe two years ago. And, you know, everything they joke about and you see on social media, if you're not from the area or you haven't gotten to A's games, it's right. Yeah. Nobody's in the Coliseum. You know, they make jokes about the security being all over it. It's true. You're at a game with maybe 10 other people and you're not allowed to sit in front row. I mean, it's all about profit for the A's owner. And the less you pay your players, the more profit you make. Yep. So it's just a shame, you know, you know, as a fan of baseball, I would prefer to see a change in ownership, but it's going to be hard to force that. It's just an underperforming team. Yep. But again, this has been a somber episode, Cam. We hate somber stuff in Cam's corner. I want to bring it back up. I want to talk about the MLB good changes, stuff that fans have liked. So, I mean, with the new pitch clock, say what you will about it. Game time is down 28 minutes compared to last year. That's good for the game when it comes to, you know, watching it at home. I know you'll have opinions about the in uh, stadium experience. We talked about them before, but when it comes to viewership, it's gone up because of that. Uh, the teams are scoring more runs per game, about one run more on a game to game basis. And lefties are hitting 13% better this year, Cam. And those come from the shift rules. We talked a lot about the in game experience and shortening the games. So maybe we can gloss over that, but how do you feel about these new shift rules? Are you happy to see hitting up? I mean, I love it. I mean, I love it for me. I love it for the new fans. It's great. You know, you want to go to a game, you want to see hitting. You don't want to see it. I mean, pitching duel is good, but it's only fun for once, you know, a couple innings, not for the whole game. You don't want to see one nothing, two nothing, three two games. You want to see 10 to nine, you know, high scoring games. And, you know, it's great for the game of baseball. More fans are interested. More fans want to go to the games, to the stadiums. And not just a shift, but I think the pitch clock, I like it. I really do. You know, I think. I think it's fastening up the game. More people are going, more people like it. You know, it's really just the old heads that hate it, really. Um, um, you know, what I don't like is how the MLB came out today and they said owners need to request for people coming, for uh, players coming back to teams, like home teams getting standing ovations, they need to request to take a timeout for it before the game, which I think it's stupid. I mean, if they shouldn't they shouldn't have the pitch clock for that. I mean, a bu- you see a bunch of players getting – strikes for it it's stupid I don't like that but everything else I love it you know at first I didn't I was very skeptical on it but I think it's great for the game yeah and I think most people were skeptics going in and the limit of time we've see, had with it so far it's been going pretty good so I think from us we got no complaints uh one last thing I want to talk to you about MLB wise is, you know, we're 30 games in. This is where we start to see injuries come into play for a lot of teams. We see guys starting to come back from that 30-day, you know, rest, you know, 15-day ILs, anything in that range. And then we're seeing guys go down. You know, most predominantly, we saw Jacob DeGrom just got put on the 15-day IL last night. And more than anything, especially where I'm at location-wise, Aaron Judge is down. He was on the 10-day injured list. And, It's definitely been a main factor in this Yankees team that just can't hit the ball. You mentioned Bryce uh, Harper being back earlier, and, you know, we're not sure about Acuna right right now. Excuse me. How do you think injuries are going to play into this season as we go deeper? And maybe what's a team that you think is being affected by these injuries in the worst way? Definitely New York Yankees. I mean, um, you got Stanton now, Judge L. Let me see. I can see for I know there's a couple other players on that team that was uh are injured. Yep, you have or Stan must have just got taken off the DL. Yeah. Um, but he was uh injured. And you can see it. I mean, they're hitting not a lot of players don't really look the same when and with Anthony Rizzo being your leading hitter, I mean that's a problem. That's a big problem. Uh you got two of the one of the best power hitters of our generation and they can't even hit the ball. I mean, it's, it's tough. Um, as well as Phillies. I mean, they're tough, you know, no Hoskins, no Harper. It was really tough for them. And now Harper's back. I mean, he's not going to be hundred percent right away. Everyone knows that, you know, he may not even be back to his true form till next year, you know? So the Phillies could still be going on this cold streak right now, but season will go. Um, even honestly, the Red Sox are getting hit pretty hard 
with injuries right now, pitching again. I mean, back to back to back years with just tough, you know, injured list players. I mean, Garrett Whitlock's always injured, always injured. And that's one of your top guys. He's, uh, he's one of the only Red Sox to go past five innings. And, you know, out of four games that the Red Sox starters have gone past five innings. And like I said, you know, the Red Sox, they can't, they don't have pitching. So it's tough when you can't do anything, you know, Kenley Jansen day to day, James Paxton, 15 day, Jolie Rodriguez, Zach Kelly, Wyatt Mills. I mean, all these are tough injuries and, you know, Trevor Story, that's a huge injury too. You know, this team, you know, they, like I said, the bridge year, they're good, but they're still having tough in the infield. Kike Hernandez, two big, 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 big errors last night, which almost lost in the game. But Doogie hit a walk off on the trash Blue Jays trash team. Yeah, what happened about that? Yeah, the Blue Jays are are higher than the Red Sox in the standings. You know they'll go farther in the playoffs. So that's more embarrassing yeah. than a lower team beat the Blue Jays. So that's more it's, embarrassing. It's baseball, Cam. There's too many games. We could do this every night. Yeah. With that being said, I'm happy the Blue Jays haven't got hit with the injury bug too hard. Tapia got you know knocked on a wild pitch by Garrett Cole, most overrated pitcher in the league. But besides that, it's been pretty good. Uh, you know, Cam and I are looking for these teams to bounce back. Wow, we're going to be bouncing out of this episode. Uh, we got a quick talk with you today. Uh, Cam's not in the best mood as usual. You know, we try to keep him up. We try to get these episodes to you, but sometimes the man's just sad, and that's how it is. Cam, do you want to give these uh, beautiful viewers anything to live or lead their lives by to wrap up this episode? I will promise you this. The Red, Red Sox will be above the Blue Jays by the time we come out with the next episode. All right. Yeah, we're going to wrap it up quicker than usual. Uh, thank you guys for watching. We're glad. We hope you paid attention for this roller coaster of a video. Cam's feeling smug. But I mean, with that, make sure to check us out on YouTube, you know, Next Man Up podcast. Check us out on the Instagram, the TikTok. You know, Banning runs a lot of it over on the TikTok there. He's coming back stronger than ever this month. He's all excited about it. And yeah, check out for more content. For any Cam's Corner specific content, uh, leave it in the comments. Give us ideas, you know. Cam's a busy man, but he always loves to talk. And we'll get back to you in a couple of weeks. Thank you guys for watching. Mamba out.